Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm making red cabbage sauerkraut. I've gotten into fermenting because I found that it's really good for you. It has a lot of good probiotics and it's an inexpensive way to get those good probiotics. So to start off with, I'm going to show you what you need. Uh, it does really help to have a food processor, but if you don't, you can just chop the cabbage with a sharp knife. You'll either use a pounder or your hands uh, and, and I'll show you how to do that. You'll need cabbage, and like I said today, we're doing a red cabbage, a bowl, some salt. It needs to be Redmond real salt or Himalayan salt. It cannot be the white processed salt that most people use. And then you'll also need a lid for your fermenting vessel. I really like these airlock lids. If you're able to, it helps if you have a starter culture packet, but if not, you can just double the amount of salt. You'll need a weight. These are a little pickling weight that helps keep the fermented vegetables underneath the level of the brine, which is important in keeping yeast and mold from growing. A tablespoon measuring spoon, knife, um, a glass vessel, like a jar that's been sterilized that you'll leave the vegetables to ferment in for about a week, and then some filtered or distilled water. And that's what you need to get started. The first step after gathering all your equipment is to chop and wash the cabbage. Now, before you chop it, you wanna make sure you take off the outer leaves because we're gonna use these later to help make sure that the chopped up cabbage stays underneath the brine that we're going to make. Sometimes it doesn't all peel off in one piece, but I usually peel off the two outermost leaves and set them on a plate just so that I know that they're clean. Then I'm gonna just chop it in half and cut out the core because we don't want that part. And because I have a food processor, I'm gonna go ahead and slice up the cabbage small enough that I can feed it into my food processor. So I'm gonna slice it up and then set it in my colander to wash it. So I'll wash it and then show you how I feed it into the food processor. Before I start shredding the cabbage, it does help to be able to weigh how much shredded cabbage you're gonna have. So I'm gonna just use this scale with the bowl on it and tear it so that it's set to zero so that once I need to empty out my food processor into here, I'll know how much shredded cabbage I have, which will help me know how much salt to use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn my food processor on and start feeding the cabbage into it. Now that I've shredded my cabbage, I can weigh it and see that it's two and a half pounds. So that means I'm gonna need one and a half tablespoons of salt. And I only need a half of one of these packets. So that's a little bit tricky, but I don't like to waste. So I'm just gonna try to dump out. Um, the instructions say that for each one of these packets from um, cutting edge cultures that you need one cup of filtered or distilled water. So I've got a half a cup of filtered water here. And so I'm just gonna add about half of this packet and stir that in. And I'm gonna go ahead and add one and a half tablespoons of salt. And the instructions also say to wait a few minutes after adding your starter culture to the water. Then it really helps if you mix it in with your hands a bit. And 
And this is going to take me about 10 minutes of mixing and pounding. So we will just speed that up for you. Now that I've been pounding this for 10 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and add my starter culture that's mixed in this filtered water. And the reason that you pound for so long is to get the cabbage to release its juices and the salt combined with pounding gets it to release its juice. When we put this in the jar, we want it to be covered by that salty water. And that will encourage all the good bacteria to grow, but discourage any bad bacteria from growing. So this is a jar. I sterilized it actually in my air fryer at 275 degrees for 10 minutes. I like to do that because then I don't have to turn on and heat up my whole oven and heat up the house. So it does help if you have a funnel, but if you don't, you can still do this. It's just a lot easier with a funnel because it is a little bit of a messy job. I'm just gonna put a little bit of cabbage in at a time and then pack it down. That's where this pounder really does come in handy. And I'll just continue to slowly fill the jar and pack it down until I've got all the cabbage in there. Now that I'm down to the last little bit of cabbage, I just wanted to show you that I go ahead and add all the last little bits and the juice. Because like I mentioned before, the vegetables, the cabbage here, need to be covered by the salty water. Now over the next few hours, a little more water will release, but just to make sure I have enough water, I'm gonna go ahead and pour a little bit more in. And then I'm gonna use a paper towel to wipe any bits of cabbage that are not under the brine away. Because those little bits that are not under the brine will start to grow mold and then that can contaminate all of your hard work. So once I have all that pushed down, I'm gonna go ahead and add my fermenting lid. I did add some water right here and that um, just creates an airlock, but allows gas to come on out of this so that I don't have to worry about burping it. Oh, I forgot. You need to add your pickle lid to help keep your vegetables underneath. And my pickle lid's not quite big enough, so I am gonna use this leaf. And then between the leaf and my weight, I can keep my cabbage underneath that brine and I'm gonna have a lot more success with this. And I'm gonna set this down in my basement in a cool, dark place and leave it there for about a week before I taste test it. And after that, when it's done, I usually will put it on salads or with hot dogs um, or I'll just eat it as a side vegetable straight. And I think it's really delicious and a great way to add probiotics to your meal. A week has passed since I made this red cabbage sauerkraut. Make sure that you put a date on it with either a sticker or a post-it note because you won't remember exactly what day you made it. And that's just the safest way to tell when it's been a week. I'm gonna go ahead and taste this now and see if it's tangy enough for me. I like to use a plate because then if it isn't tangy enough and I want to put it back in the basement to ferment a little longer, I know that my weight and my cabbage leaf are still really clean. Yeah, it's pretty good and tangy. Um, now I'm just going to go ahead and put a regular jar lid on it and I'll store it in the fridge and I can keep it in the fridge for several months without it going bad. If it does develop an off flavor or taste, then that mean it, means that it has gone bad. The nice thing about fermented foods is that when they have gone bad, they smell really bad and they taste really bad. So it makes it really easy to tell if it's safe or not to eat. So good luck making your red cabbage and thanks for watching.